Hello Facebook, this is once again Sarah from Kenny Cakes coming to you live. I am getting ready to prepare our meal. Um, as you all know, our children are starting school tomorrow, so mommy duty's called, so pardon me for the delay, but we're going to go ahead and get ready with our meal. Tonight we're going to be preparing cream of mushroom pork chops, fried corn, and mashed potatoes, homemade mashed potatoes. This meal should not take long, and this meal only cost me, actually it was less than $20. So um, everybody that looked at the post that I posted yesterday, uh, this is a wonderful meal that you can prepare, a quick meal that you can prepare for your kids during the school nights that will not take you a long time and that will not cost you a, long, um, a lot of money. Um, I already have my water boiling for my mashed potatoes, so the first thing I'm going to do, because they'll probably take the longest, is place the potatoes that I already pre-cut in the boiling water. And I added salt to the water, so um, the uh, potatoes will have a little bit of flavor when I get done. But we're going to go ahead and add, and these are Yukon Gold potatoes. So, you can use Idaho or red potatoes, whatever you have at home, but I just chose to use Yukon Gold. This has been such a busy week, um, getting my daughter prepared for school. And she's trying to get her outfit out, her lunch packed, and she's so excited about starting school tomorrow. So um, I have tried to balance getting her ready and still continuing on the Tuesday. So I uh, prepped everything that I was going to use for this meal um, earlier. So we've got our potatoes in the water. They're going to boil. I actually just covered the potatoes enough to cover the top of them. Um, and once the water boils down, we'll know that our potatoes are done. I have my skillet heating for my pork chops. They're already clean. And then I have my skillet also heating for my corn. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil to my pan for my pork chops. We'll let that get nice and warm and then we'll place our pork chops in there. Hopefully the people that have been viewing have their seasoning blend already prepared. I have uh, mixed in this cup garlic powder, paprika, onion powder, salt, and pepper. That's my seasoning blend. And this is what I use pretty much for all of my meats because you can't go wrong with this. So we're going to use the same seasoning blend. The only thing I think I used the last couple of times was the Magic Mike seasoning, the... Um, Cajun seasoning. We're not going to use that with this meal, but um, everything else we're going to go ahead and use. And I also added some carrots. I had a couple of people message me um, because they are diabetic or their diet um, cannot sustain the starches from the potatoes and the corn. So I tried to add a vegetable to this meal. Um, the carrots were only $1.29. Um, so that'll give um, them another option to use with this meal versus using the starches. Also, um, I needed a bread. I went to Aldi's and we ended up getting some croissants. So I'm going to use these croissants from Aldi's. We're going to uh, add a little bit of butter to them and stick them in the oven for about two minutes and add them to our meal as well. I'm going to show you all of the ingredients that I have for this meal. We have our potatoes in the pot. I already have some sliced green peppers that we'll use for our pork chops. I have a medium sliced onion that we'll also use for the pork chops. Um, we have a cup of variety of red pepper, yellow pepper, and green pepper. We're going to use that for our fried corn. We have fresh mushrooms that are already cleaned. We'll use for our pork chops. And I already have prepared some pre-fried um, fried bacon that we're going to use for the fried corn. 
So once this skillet gets nice and warm for our pork chops, we'll go ahead and place them in there. I'm going to add a little bit of butter to my pan for my corn. The recipe really calls for uh, bacon drippings, but I'm thinking that I want to stay away from so much bacon as we're using the bacon to garnish the corn. So I'm just going to go ahead and place a little bit of butter, about a tablespoon of butter in the pan for the corn. We'll let that get nice and warm. I'm using frozen corn from Aldi as well. You could probably use canned corn, but I really like the crunchy freshness of the um, corn. I really would prefer to use corn right off the cob. But since I'm trying to make this meal very quickly, within 30 to 45 minutes, we're going to use frozen corn. Also, I hope everybody saw my post about the giveaways that we're going to have for this video. I try to incorporate some videos, uh, I mean some giveaways as an incentive um, to like and share my video with your friends if I mean you have friends that end up picking up hot and ready's and Burger King and Wendy's um, on those busy days where the kids have soccer and football and basketball please like and share this video so we can encourage them to cook a home cooked meal versus eating out at least you know what you're putting in your food I really like using whole foods so please like and share um, we're all promoting healthiness and wellness um, in our community. A lot of people are looking for gluten-free meals. So I'm really, really trying to focus on the direction. I know I'm using butter. I'm not using just olive oil, but I'm really trying to make these meals a lot healthier than um, eating out. So our butter is warm. We're going to place our bag of frozen corn and our hot oil or butter. I don't want the butter to get too warm because it'll stop to brown. So once you see the um, butter bubbling up, it's time to add your corn. And then you can turn it down. So I have the corn on about a five. And we're going to cook on that. My oil is already hot for my pork. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. I'm going to preheat the oven to 375 because once we're done searing the pork chops and seasoning them, we're going to let that cool off just a little bit because I don't want to um, scorch the pork chops. So for the corn, we're just going to add a little bit of pepper. And if you looked at the video last week, I showed you my nice pepper grinder and my nice seesaw grinder that I got from Polly's. They're nice and big. So we're going to add a little bit. That grease heats up so fast. So I'm letting that cool off actually a little bit because I don't want to um, heat up the pork chops too fast. All right, we're, we're going to add a little bit of brown sugar. Um, I'm just going to use my hands to sprinkle this, but I'm thinking about a tablespoon of brown sugar to corn. I'm not going to add the first baking to the corn until it's done because I still want them to be kind of fresh and kind of crunchy, crunchy on the eat though. Our mashed potatoes are cooking nicely. Alright, I turned up the corn just a little bit. I turned it up to a six if you're cooking on a... Um, 
stove that's about a medium height on a gas stove. We're gonna let that cook for a little bit. Now I'm getting ready to add the pork chops and to my grease and that's still smoking real good. The thing when you're um, cooking live you have to adjust and do everything while everybody is watching but I want to let you know because I'm quite sure these are situations you'll encounter while you're in the kitchen and so you just use your own judgment on how high to cook the food on or how low and what you know your oven settings are and your stove settings are. So I think that's good. So I'm using butterfly boneless uh, pork chops for this meal. And you want it hot enough because you want to sear. Look at that. Be sure to step away from the stove when you're placing your meat in there because it has water on there. The water is going to always bubble up and flame up. So, be careful because I don't want anybody having a third degree burn when they're cooking the Kenny Cake recipe. I'm going to go ahead and season this side. Alright, and you should about have about another half a cup, I mean not half a cup, but a half a serving of your seasoning so when you flip it over you can season the other side. going to check on my potatoes. And like I said, the potatoes will uh, take a little longer to cook so when you get home and you know you're going to cook mashed potatoes, already have your water ready and boiling. It won't take long to uh, cook, but it's going to take longer than the corn and the meat. So when you get home and if you know you're cooking, preheat your oven, have your water boiling, have all your things ready the night before, and that'll make it a lot easier when you come home and try to get this meal done within a specific amount of time. Because I know we have children's hair to do, baths to get in, everybody has to get ready for school. So my whole goal is to have everybody have cheap, I'm not going to say cheap, but just cost efficient meals and quick meals and to keep us from eating fast food. Going to check on the corn just a little bit. Now I remind you, it's not going to take long for the pork chops to brown. So, I'm thinking about a minute or two, they're going to be brown because I had them up on a higher heat. You can flip those babies over, season the other side, and we're going to go ahead and add our mushrooms, our green peppers, and our onions. Cover them, let them simmer on this stove for about a minute, and then we're going to place it in the oven once the oven is ready. So I'm going to get ready and um, flip over the pork chop. We don't want to overcook the pork chops. When we overcook them, they're dry and they're tough. So I'm definitely going to pay attention to once the meat is white because they start out red, not to overcook them. My oven is ready for the pork chops. We're going to go ahead and season the other side. I know you cannot see how they look. I'm going to bring the pan up to the camera so you can just get an idea of what it looks like when I say that they're done. So that's how they're looking on that side. Alright, I'm going to wash my hands again just because that's what I like to do. Alright, I'm going to add just about a half a teaspoon of sea salt to my corn. Alright, the 
corn is done. It does not take long for it to cook. Now we're gonna add our variety of peppers. I have red peppers, green peppers, and orange peppers. We're gonna add those to the corn. And it just gives it a beautiful color and a beautiful flavor. I keep knocking over that little cup. Just wiping off my stove because we had the grease popping and everything from the pork chops. Our pork chops are ready. So I'm gonna turn that down to a three on the electric stove. So it'll be about a medium low if you're cooking on gas. Cause like I said, we do not want to overcook them. The potatoes are still cooking. I'm gonna turn my corn down to about a three and let that continue to simmer for just a little bit. All right, now we're gonna add our cream of mushroom to our pork chops. I bought two cases, I mean two cans of the cream of mushroom just in case um, the one can wasn't enough because I like to use the reserve gravy over for the um, mashed potatoes. So I'm using one can of cream, cream of mushroom for right now. There's a little bit of it sticking to the pan, I mean sticking to the can. So I'm going to pour a little bit of milk in there, mix it up and then pour it on top of my pork chops. So just added a little bit of milk. Also, if you have heavy cream, you can use heavy cream. But I have milk, so that's what I'm going to use. Just mixing it up in the can. Now we're going to pour this on our pork chops. And I think I am going to use the other can because that's just not enough to cover um, the top of the pork chops. I'm going to probably pour another quarter of a can of milk in here just to make it a little more fluid. Gonna stir that up a little bit. Cover that over the pork chops. Alrighty. Now we're gonna add our fresh mushrooms that have already been cleaned. I'm going to add my sliced green peppers. And then I had, and that was about a half of a green pepper. I have a medium white onion that I'm also going to add there that's been sliced. Hi, Selena. Hi, Darnell. Hi, DiCarlo. Hi, Denise. Hopefully, you all are enjoying the video so far. Once again, we do have a contest going. Anybody that shares this video, and um, actually not the video, but once shares the recipe that they made, um, are entitled to a half a dozen Kenny Cakes. Also, the first person to, um, I don't know if I said to share it, but... If you go back and look at my post, there are plenty of winners. I had a couple of people that won last week, and they enjoyed their Kenny Cakes. 
they had, and actually it's so funny, I had a person uh, tell me that they only wanted vanilla cupcakes. I ended up making strawberry uh, cupcakes with cream cheese. Oh, say hi, Kennedy. This hi. is Kennedy. She's probably going to be getting ready for bed and getting ready for school once I get done with this meal. But I made uh, strawberry cupcakes, and she was like, Sarah, I only want your vanilla. So, so I gave her the strawberry ones, and she was in love with them. So, best believe, if you tune in tonight and you are a winner, you're going to definitely enjoy the Kenny Cakes. Alrighty, so we're going to get ready and cover. What, baby? Mwah. We're going to get ready and cover up our pork tops and let them simmer for a little bit before they go into the oven, which is already preheated. I have my corn, which is almost done. Can you believe that? This is almost done. Like I said, I don't want to overcook it. I don't want it to be soggy and, and, and shrink up. So we're going to get ready and take this away from the heat. I had already pre-cooked some bacon, so we're going to add a little bit of bacon to the corn, and then we're going to cover it and take it off the heat, the heat and just let it simmer. Can I tell you how hard it is not to eat this bacon? I could probably eat bacon like potato chips, but I won't. This is just for garnishment, so we're going to use a little bit of this. And our corn and I will show you how pretty this corn is in just a moment I'm going to get ready and get a skillet together because I'm going to add some carrots to this dish like I said just to make it a little colorful and a little um, healthier for the people that can't eat the potatoes and the corn because it's a lot of starch so I'm going to heat a pan for the carrots. I'm going to show you the corn. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Can you see that corn? Oh, doesn't that look yummy? So our fried corn is done. Now how quick was that? I'm going to trade out skillets with this one for the carrots. And we're going to turn this one all the way off. I'm going to place a little bit of olive oil in the skillet for the carrots. Now I'm going to place the potatoes, I mean the pork chops, in the oven. They're coming to a nice boil and that's what you want to see. You want to make sure that the ingredients is nice and hot and that it's boiling. Now we're going to put this in the oven. I have that on 375. I'm going to let that cook for about 15 minutes. And so what I'm going to do is I will not Keep all of your time. I'm going to let the pork chops cook a little bit. And then I will come back live when they are done and finish the rest of this meal. It's 7, about 7.45. So I don't want to keep you on here just watching the uh, pork chops cook. So we're going to give you a minute to get some things taken care of. And then Sarah will come right back and finish up the rest of this meal. Please, everybody that started watching, tune back in. You're going to enjoy it. It's a quick meal, wonderful meal. I just don't want to waste your time because I know that we all have a lot to do. I'll see you in about 15 minutes, Facebook.